Gouda? 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 It's the cheese of many different pronunciations. And which is right kind of depends on where in the world you're from. What's not disputed is when Gouda was first made. Wherever you look on the internet, sites will invariably tell you that the first records of Gouda are from 1184, and it's therefore one of the oldest cheeses still being made. But is this true? Or is it yet another case of a myth masquerading as fact because it's been repeated too often? Hey there, cheese historians! I'm Julia, and this is Cheese History, a channel all about the origins, history, and impact of cheese. Today we're looking at Gouda, a Dutch cheese that is produced all over the world and comes in a whole range of different variations, including some flavoured with herbs and spices. In particular, we're going to look at whether Gouda was first made in 1184, or if this is another cheese origin myth. I'm going to start by looking at this claim and whether or not I think it's a reliable one before looking at the history of cheese making in the Netherlands, particularly in the Holland region, and how Gouda is made, to find out what we can know about when Gouda was first made. Just a small side note, today the Netherlands is the name of the country of the Dutch. Holland is a region of that country along the coast, today divided into the provinces of North Holland and South Holland. I want to be clear that in this video I'll be using Holland only to refer to that particular region of the Netherlands rather than the modern day country as a whole. If you look up the history of Gouda on the internet, like I did when I first started researching for this video, pretty much every site says that its production was first recorded in 1184, and it's therefore one of the oldest cheeses still being made today. None of these sites mention where this vital first record of Gouda was made though, or even what type of record it was, which makes tracking it down incredibly difficult. Big claims like this, particularly when they're repeated almost word for word across multiple sites, always make me suspicious when I'm researching a cheese's history. I've done my best to find any verifiable record of Gouda dating to the 12th century, but so far have not been able to find anything. So my next thought was to try and find any reason to believe that there was some truth to this 12th century date for the production of Gouda. I was able to discover that the town of Gouda, from which the cheese gets its name, was founded sometime in the late 11th or early 12th century. The oldest record of the town dates to 1139, in a charter by Bishop Andreas of Utrecht. 1139 is pretty close to 1184, historically speaking anyway. So 1184 as a date would make sense for the cheese, as the town was founded not long before. But there's more to Gouda cheese than the town it was named after. While I think it's safe to say that perhaps the cheese that Gouda descends from could date back to the 12th century or even before, it's much more accurate to say that Gouda as we know it today dates from the 17th century, because it was only at this point that everything aligned to create such a cheese. To explain why this is the case, we need a bit of context, starting with the history of cheese making in general in Holland, starting way back in the Neolithic period. People have been making cheese in the area of the modern-day Netherlands for a very long time. Coastal Holland nevertheless had a long history of primitive dairying and cheese making, stretching back to the late Neolithic, when small settlements were established on dune ridges that were situated amid the expansive salt marshes. The early inhabitants raised a few crops on the well-drained crests of the ridges and were heavily dependent on cattle raising and dairying. They practiced a form of transhumanance, whereby the cattle were grazed on the coastal maritime pastures below the settlement in the summer and returned to the higher ground during the winter. When Julius Caesar encountered the Germanic tribes there in 57 BC, he notes their preference for cheese. For agriculture they have no zeal, and the greater part of their food consists of milk, cheese and flesh. This comment is part of a wider section contrasting the different ways of life of the Gauls and the Germans. From this, I think it's pretty safe to say that the Germanic tribes in the Holland area knew how to make cheese. We don't know much about that cheese though. The area that we know today as the Netherlands was not completely controlled by the Romans when its empire reached its greatest extent. But some of it was, including parts of Holland, and the Romans certainly had a presence in that area. Whatever contact they did have with the Romans might have led to them picking up some of the Roman ways of making cheese. 
Roman soldiers had cheese as part of their rations, and when they were stationed anywhere for any period of time, some of them must have been tasked with making cheese, because the logistics of supplying the Roman army from Rome would have been a nightmare due to the expanse of the empire. It would be much simpler to make it locally where possible. So the Germanic ancestors of the Dutch may have refined their cheese making skills under the influence of the Romans. But the Romans also had a much farther reaching impact on the development of the Germanic territories over the following centuries, particularly the part we know today as Holland where Gouda originates. During their time in the Holland area, the Romans didn't do much of the building of roads and cities that they did in other parts of the conquered Germanic territories, such as nearby Flanders and Brabant. This lack of infrastructure and the fact that much of the land is made up of peat bogs meant that Holland was sparsely populated until around the 10th century, when the aristocrats of Holland and the bishops of Utrecht started work draining the bogs so that crops could be grown. Throughout all this time, daring was present, but on quite a small scale. In fact, the boggy nature of the land meant that raising livestock was one of the few ways to make a living in the area. So cheese was being made in Holland from before the time of the Romans, so more than 2,000 years ago. But could any of this cheese be what we would recognize today as Gouda? There are two reasons why I don't think it was. First, the town of Gouda wasn't established until sometime in the 11th or 12th centuries, getting its charter in 1139. Like many other cheeses in Europe, Gouda was named after the market where it was traded. The cheese was made in the surrounding area and sold in the local market in the town of Gouda, the Gouda Kashmarkt, which was the largest cheese market in the south of Holland, handling between around 4 to 6 million pounds, 1.8 to 2.7 million kilograms of cheese annually during the 17th century. The current market was built in 1668, but Gouda likely had some form of cheese market since at least the end of medieval times, possibly as far back as the 12th century. The cheese market's website claims that it began in 1395, but that's another date I haven't been able to verify. So if the cheese gets its name from the cheese market in town that can only be dated to the 12th century at the earliest, can we say that Gouda existed before that? I'm nitpicking a bit here because you could say it doesn't matter what the cheese is called if it did in fact exist before it got the name it's known by today. And this will be fair. However, the second reason is more significant. One of the key steps that is required to make Gouda the cheese it is today wasn't developed and used to make Gouda until sometime in the 17th century. Before going into the details of how Gouda is made and why that means it can't date back to the 12th century, I need to briefly pick up the history of Holland where we left it in the 10th century because it helps explain why Dutch cheese making changed in the 17th century. I already mentioned that up until the 10th century Holland was a sparsely populated boggy area with some farming and not much else. It was only then that the process of draining the bogs and reclaiming the land to grow cereal crops like wheat began in earnest. These cereal crops dominated the economy until the 14th century. Several centuries of draining the bogs caused the land to contract, sinking several meters below sea level. At almost the same time, the sea level rose slightly, raising the water table and making the newly reclaimed land very wet, not ideal for cereal crops. The Dutch then had to come up with their innovative system of dikes throughout their fields to allow the land to drain, with windmills to pump the excess water away. The higher water levels in the soil were still less suitable for wheat, but well suited for pasture land for cattle, so many farmers switched to dairy farming. Dairy cows were the favoured providers of milk in the Low Countries, being better suited to the lowland pasture than goats. In a region of small holdings, cows were more economical producers. One of them produced the same amount of butter and cheese as 10 sheep. The Dutch also became expert cattle breeders in the mid-16th to mid-17th century, breeding cows that produced more milk than the countries around them. As a result, the Dutch began producing a lot of cheese. Like most Dutch cheeses, Gouda is a cow's milk cheese that is usually made by the women of the farm, who did the hard work of cheese making. But there were also mentions of dairymen involved in cheese making. As the cows were producing more milk, the cheesemakers of the southern part of Holland, who were selling their cheese in the Gouda Karsmarkt, wanted to make bigger cheeses that would be more efficient to make, store and ship than lots of smaller cheeses. But they had a problem. To make cheese, you need to turn milk into a solid. This is typically done with an enzyme called rennet, which causes the protein in milk to break down, allowing it to coagulate and form a solid. Now because milk started out as a liquid, there's a lot of moisture trapped in this solid curd, and some of it needs to be removed to turn the curd into cheese that can last for more than a few days. The most basic way to do this is to cut the curd into pieces, increasing the surface area, 
Moving the curds about by stirring them encourages them to expel some of the liquid, called whey. To make a big cheese, you need to remove as much of this whey from the curds as possible. Otherwise, when the cheese is made, all that moisture is trapped inside the cheese and can lead to the cheese rotting from the inside. However, only so much whey can be expelled by just cutting and stirring. So if the cheesemakers of Holland wanted to make bigger cheeses, they needed to figure out a way to get more whey out of the curds and stop the cheese rotting. Their solution to this problem basically created the key features of Gouda that we would recognize today. A mild sweet cheese that can be eaten after a few months or can be aged for up to three years. A method was developed to achieve a balance between the large size of Gouda cheeses, most wheels were 15 to 16 pounds, 7 kilograms, and the need to reduce the moisture content to reduce the risk of internal rot. In response to these circumstances, the cheesemakers in the south, as opposed to the north where the smaller Adam cheeses were predominant, developed a process that first scalded and stirred the curds in hot water, then removed the whey before molding and pressing the cheese. Pressing the cheese produces a drier, more durable cheese ideal for aging. Removing the whey also removes some of the lactose, which reduces the acidity leaving behind a sweeter cheese. The Gouda cheesemakers might not have come up with this process of heating the curds to make a lower moist cheese by themselves. You see, by the end of the 1700s, the English cheesemakers in Gloucester and Cheddar were also heating their curds to make drier cheese. So there's a lot of debate as to whether the English copied the idea from the Dutch or whether the Dutch copied it from the English. I'm planning to do a whole separate video on that topic, so keep an eye out for that. Gouda got its distinctive look around this time as well. Its surface was dyed yellow with saffron, protecting it from insects and making it instantly recognizable to buyers. It seems the Dutch had something of a knack of making their cheese distinctive, as Adam supports a unique, almost cannonball-like shape and a red coating. Gouda also has rounded edges to help prevent the cheese from getting damaged in transit. Flavors such as cumin and cloves were also added to give a bit of variety. The Dutch were able to add all of these spices because of the Dutch East Indies Company, founded in the 17th century, which traded spices from the East Indies to Europe. With the development of the process of replacing some of the whey with hot water, stirring and pressing the curds, along with coloring the outside yellow, rounding the edges and adding different flavors, Gouda as we would recognize it was born. The fact that this 17th century development is so key to what makes Gouda Gouda also means that I don't think it's possible to say that Gouda dates to the 12th century, or even to the time before the Romans. At least, not the cheese that we would recognize today as Gouda. Cheese was made in Holland, and cheese was being made around and sold in Gouda, but I think that there's a strong case that those cheeses are at best the ancestors of modern Gouda, or different steps in its development, but ones we don't seem to know much about. Instead, Gouda is a product of the 17th century innovations of the Dutch, as they discovered ways to make bigger cheeses with all the milk their cows were producing. If you happen to know what the record of Gouda that dates to 1184 is, and where I can access it, I would love to know, so please let me know in the comments of this video. Do also let me know whether you agree with me or not on the dating of Gouda to the 17th century, rather than earlier. I'd love to know what you guys think about that question. These videos on cheese history are possible with the support of my small and dedicated group of patrons over on Patreon. Your support means a lot to me. If you like learning about cheese history and want to support me in my efforts to research and discover all these random details about the history of cheeses, please consider supporting me on Patreon. If you're not able to, that's totally fine as well. I'm happy that you've made it this far into the video. Anyway, thanks for watching, Cheese Historians, and I'll see you next time.